Um, yeah, so my name is Scott Mott. Um, I love your guys' country. Had so much fun already, uh, swimming, doing buggy riding, eating and drinking. So really happy to be here. It's my first time. Um, I work for a company called SendGrid. How many of you guys have heard of SendGrid? Okay, cool. Uh, for those of you who haven't, we make it really easy to send and receive email in your application. Uh, if you're interested in that, you can talk to me later, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. <clears throat> so I'm going to talk to you about why passwords suck. Like, they seriously really suck. Um, just the other day, our company, SendGrid, we've got a human resources team. We're decent sized now. We're around 200 people, so we need an HR team. Uh, and they have us always signing up for new websites. So this website I have to sign up for, I've got to put in a username and password. And it wants like, you know, eight characters exactly. And it wants one to be an asterisk, one a number. And then it's like, you know, like your right arm or something for the next. So the way websites do these things, is difficult, uh, it drives you crazy. So I'm gonna talk to you about an implementation. It's, it's an experiment, it's a working experiment. We'll do some live code. Um, but an implementation I think could potentially get rid of the password. So before we do that, let's just talk about real quickly why passwords suck. So number one, they're hard to remember, right? So if you're doing passwords right, you're on a different website, you're using a different password every time. And most of us probably now, especially developers, we're probably you know, doing like 300, 300 websites we're visiting. So you should just have about 300 different passwords. You're not gonna remember that in your head, so then you've gotta use a tool using something like LastPass or the software one password. But nonetheless, they're hard to remember. And remember, a lot of people aren't like us, like developers that do that. Other people just want to use, they'll use a single password and use it across all 300 of those sites. So that leads to the next one. Because passwords are hard to remember, it tends to encourage reuse. So someone uses the same password across all their sites. And you saw the last talk TJ talked about, you saw a lot of those passwords people are using. And I can bet you some of those passwords were being used on all kinds of other sites too. So if your password gets out in the open, all this is obvious. but you know, uh, if someone's doing plain text, one of the sites, then if someone gets a hold of that, a hacker, then you're in trouble for all your other sites. So, tends to re uh, encourage that. They never expire, so your password tends to always be the same unless you're going in and updating it. And even for the sites that do that do, do expiration, it's not very fun. You go in there and six months later, they're like, oh, you need to change your password. And you're like, geez, like, just let me in. I just want to get into the website. So, that's another problem with passwords. And then nowadays, you've got these things, and I spend most of my time on it, on my phone. Um, and typing a long password on your phone is difficult. And especially if you're driving or something, or you're riding your bicycle and you're trying to type a password to log in, uh, it's really difficult. It's not very friendly. So, uh, and I find myself doing that a lot now. I don't know if anyone else does, but. So uh, those are all the reasons that they're hard, right? Um, and then a big reason, too, is like, because passwords are hard to remember and they tend to encourage reuse, a lot of people use the same password, like we said, and that leads, leads to security issues. So for all those reasons, because passwords are hard, it leads to security issues for us as developers. Security issue that is really tough for us to deal with because it's humans, right? And you can't really change the way humans, the way we work, but you can try. So one of the best solutions to trying is two-factor auth. So, and maybe this is a good solution. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of websites are starting to do this. I like two-factor auth. Who's heard of two-factor auth? Okay, so developers, so most all of you guys have. For those of you who haven't, um, the basics are you still have a username and password, but there's this second part, so this two-part auth. And the second part sends you a short code, usually via SMS. Sometimes uh, apps will have their, uh, companies, websites will have their own little app on the phone, and that'll generate a code, and then you log in. So it's these two things. It's something you, you have in your head, and it's something you physically have to be able to log you in. So two-factor auth is nice. Um, but you still have the password there, so it's still hard to remember. That still is re encouraging using the same password across multiple sites. Now you've got built-in expiration, which is nice. So these, these short codes, they expire. They only last so long. They tend to only last a couple minutes, sometimes only 30 seconds, sometimes maybe 10 minutes. But now you've got like a plus, like, OK, two-factor auth. We've got expiration. Awesome. You still have to type in a long password. So if you're still like on your bicycle or driving, you've still got to type that in. Now you've got a new problem. You're waiting for that short code. 
So this little short code you get via SMS, maybe it's four digits, you've got to wait for that. And usually that's not too bad of a problem. SMS is fast. If you're using an app, it's pretty much instantaneous if they've got the generator app. Um, but it is kind of a new problem. Um, and then you, it's hard to set up. It's hard to set up for your users. They have to go in, add this, put in their phone number, download an app. A lot of users won't do that. We probably do in this room, like I use two-part auth, it's awesome, like you should use it, you should use it for your Gmail, you should use it for whatever systems you use, like your GitHub, um, but it's hard to set up for a user. And then it's also hard as a developer, right? So if you're building a new app and you're trying to do two-part auth, you're probably spending, even if you're a pretty good developer, it's probably going to take you a couple days just to get two-part auth working. And you could be applying that time elsewhere, like in your app as you're starting. And usually if you are doing two-part auth, it's because you've already got a successful app, you've got a lot of users, you've got security concerns. And so you're probably spending two weeks just because your app is larger, there's a larger code base, to add that in. And that's taking away from time you could be building. So while two-part auth is great, I think we should be thinking about, for certain sites, maybe two-part auth isn't the answer. Um, because the problem is the password, right? You still have that password that you're typing in. So looking at two-part auth, what's the good part of two-part auth? It's the second part. It's that short code that you get. So the password sucks so bad and humans are so bad at using it that we have to implement the second part. So let's just flip that, right? Let's try flipping that and let's just do the second part and see how that goes. So, I've got an implementation, it's just an experiment, but it is working code. We're going to go through some live code in a bit. It's called Handshake.js, and it does this. It takes that second part and experiments with that as your login system. And it tries to make it as easy to use as possible. Um, <coughs> so to shift a little bit, I created this little app. Um, I'm really bad at flossing, so I needed something to remind me to floss. So I created, I created a little app that... Uh, it sends me an email every day, and I have to reply yes to that email, like, did you floss? Okay, yes, I flossed. If I don't reply yes, it sends me another email an hour later. Basically nags me. So it's like having my mom there, but, you know, I'm grown up now and she's not around. <laughs> so, but I only, I only log into this site twice, twice a year. Our time changes in the U.S. I think your guys is, maybe does too. Um, but I wanted to come at 8 a.m., or maybe sometimes I want to change it to 10 a.m., so I rarely log in, and I don't want a username and password just to change the time of when this sends the initial reminder. So right now it sends it to me at 8 a.m. in the morning. So instead, I implemented this, and this is kind of where the idea started coming from, is you just put in your email and you request a login, and then this is kind of on your phone right now, and then the next, the next page, you, uh, you get, okay, uh, confirm login, and you get this drop down with your short code. You type in that short code, and like you're logged in. So there's the short code being typed in. Bam, you're logged in. So like you're done. That's it. There's no username. There's no password. It's, it's basically like pretty basic. You're just waiting for this email. And a lot of people now on their phones usually, you get that drop down just coming on your phone. It's like getting a text message via email. So um, let's do some code so I can actually show you. So let's just do some live code. So test, test. Okay, cool. Um, so there's floss today, uh, but we won't do that one. So here's the bit of code. It, there's, it's under a GitHub repo, so it's open source. Like, if people want to contribute, that's awesome. There's a script that you basically drop in. So the amount of code you're dropping in is this and this. And then you're doing some code on the back end to set a session. So we'll actually go through that. So I've got a... So the very first thing you do is you register your app name. And even this piece is open source, so you can self-host this if you want. But as a convenience, I've got like this middle server layer set up for you. So let's do Abriel Ruby, okay, and I'll put in my email. And as long as my internet works here, let's refresh it. Come on, internet. 
Okay, while that's going, let me at least get the app up. So I, I've got this very basic Ruby app, so let's just look at it. It's just a uh, Sinatra app. Let's close that. Make this a little smaller. There you guys go. So there's like a you know home route, a logout. There's a dashboard that you need to have a user session set before you can show the dashboard. And then there's this slash login success. And that takes the authentication mechanism. So let's go back and see if the internet is working. I do need internet for this. That's going. Come on. Okay, here it comes. Okay, so Abriel Ruby. So the first thing you do is you come here, you sign up, you choose what you want your app name to be, and then uh, send an email, and then hit submit. Okay, and then you get back this salt. You need to keep this secret. This is really important. Uh, and then you have your app name. So going back to the app, let's just uh, show you what it looks like real fast. And actually, you guys get your phones out because you're going to help me with this a little bit. Um, okay, but let's just see here. So 5,000. So here's the app. I can't go to slash dashboard, right? So this is trying to go to slash dashboard. And I'm not logged in. And I've got this request log in there. So let's just simulate if I would have built that. So let's just come back. So you saw the routes, just to go back over them, slash route, slash dashboard. Here's our views. So here's this index file. So here's the JavaScript being dropped in, right? And let's specify our app name. Okay, and it was Abriel Ruby. Okay, uh, and then this other bit of code too is literally copied and pasted. If we come back to this, it's just copied and pasted from here. So there's a there's a few lines of code you need to drop in on the front end, and that's what's building the login form. Okay, and then we also need to set the salt. So I did have environment variable set up, but let's, so there was the app name. I'll just hard code them for now. So you can kind of see a little clear. So let's come set the salt. Here was our salt. Okay. All right, let's run that. So you guys get your phone out. I'm going to make my computer so you can access it. And so if you go to mot.ngrok.com. I'll put it up on the screen. Oh, it's going to. Just without the at sign there. So, mot.ngrok.com. And it's not mobile friendly, but you can get on there. Okay, and then, uh, so it's running. Cool. All right, so I see someone, some people are starting to make some requests. Uh, and then I'm going to request login. Okay, so this is just a JavaScript piece that got dropped in. So it's really ugly right now, but it could be made to look nice. And then there's an auth code. So that shoots the email to log in. Um, so let's go check our email. Refresh this. Okay, update. There's the email, right? You can use, I'm using SendGrid, so the email tends to get there really fast because there's one downside of email <laughs> that'll take a while. Um, but it's built so that you can use anything. So if you're using Mandrill, if you're using Mailgun, you can drop all that in. So there's my code, 3793, and that just came to my phone as well. And I do 3793, confirm login, and that's going to redirect me into the dashboard. And if you guys want, if you, if you get logged in, oh, if you get logged in, can you call out the numbers? Like, call out the codes you're getting, and then hold up your phone. I'm not sure what happened there if I used the old code. Okay, so people are getting logged in. If you get logged in, hold up your phone. My, my internet is just sketchy. There we go. Okay. So there you go, hold it up, it's like a rave, yay. <laughs> All right, so like that's it though, literally, so that, that's, so even on stage it only took a few minutes to really implement that and even with kind of rough internet. Um, but the benefits I think, um, and there's, there's some drawbacks too, this is very like a contrarian approach, but now there's nothing to remember. The user doesn't have a password they have to remember, which is really great, right? There's zero chance to reuse the password for that reason, because there's no password. You've got built-in expiration now because you're doing that second part of two off. 
uh, of two-part auth, like literally that code gets generated fresh every time. It's always a different code. And the code only lasts for two minutes by default. And you can configure that too. All the open source code, you can change that. There's an environment variable. You can change that to make it 10 minutes if you need, 30 seconds, whatever you want. There's no long passwords to type. It's four digits. And you can configure that too. So if you want it longer, you want six digits, you want to be a little extra secure, you can do that. Now, as a negative, you've got to wait for that short code. So it takes a little while, right, for that email to arrive. But maybe if this was implemented with SMS, it'd be a little faster. And it's really easy to set up. So you just dropped in a little bit of JavaScript, and you didn't have to do much on the back end. You're just setting that session on the back end. There's a Ruby gem. So the Ruby gem here, let me show you the code. So I'm going to turn that off so you guys aren't getting it now. If you're trying to log in, it won't work. So the handshake JS Ruby gem is literally set the salt, so set that environment variable, and then there's a validate function here. And it's just passing the email and the hash that comes back from that login success. So when the success response comes back, there's a hash and it validates against those. Uh, and so that's all, that's all up here as well. I think it's under there. There it is. So like very, very simple. Um, yeah, so in addition, it's all open source. The kind of next step, I think, what I, I'm starting to use this for my own stuff. Uh, I'd like to add SMS or even phone calls. So even the way it's designed is that eventually you could do like SMS and email or phone calls or like two phone calls. So you could be able to, to choose in that piece of JavaScript, like send via SMS or send via phone call or send like for crazy nuclear security codes, you could say send to this person and then that person gets the phone call with the code and has to literally call you and say like, okay, here's the code to log in. Like the way this is designed, you could actually do that. So, which I think is kind of cool. Um, yeah, and then I think it's useful for sites you like rarely go to. So when I go to like a government site, um, maybe my student loan site, I don't, I don't like remembering my passwords for those and saving them in 1Password or, or uh, those other, other tools. Um, and I think it's nice for mobile-based, especially maybe if you're doing SMS, you're accepting people's phone numbers. Like, okay, then send via SMS. It's really fast. They get the short code. They're logged in. Um, and then great for hackathons. Like, there's no sign-up process, right? You don't, you, this basically replaces forgot password, sign-up, and login forms, all in one form. So um, that... That is it. There's some resources, but otherwise, guys, thank you. Uh, that is Handshake JS and like passwordless authentication. Thanks. Okay. So questions. Because, yeah, there's some negatives, too, so. So do you guys have, uh, you, I don't know if you have that implemented already, but do you have, like, some DDoS prevention? So let's say I just DDoS your service, and then you're going to be waiting forever to get that password because I'm DDoSing right now. Exactly. So no is the answer right now. The way it's designed is you can host it yourself. I've put that hosting up, that middle layer that actually makes the request with the person's email and sends out the email. I've hosted that right now just for free because I have like an unlimited SendGrid account that people can just use and test with. But that actual piece of code, uh, it's, a, it's actually a Node app. You can host that yourself and handle all that yourself. Okay, okay, um, makes sense. And then there's also the DDoSing on like, you could, yeah, okay, cool, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, anyone else? Uh, me. Okay. So what about the security? Do, do you think this code will be used in any app or does it have limitations? Yeah, so I, I personally would argue this is more secure than just a regular password form. So if you're only doing login and password, this is not as secure as two-part auth, but I would argue it's more secure than a regular password form because the biggest security issue is your users and the passwords they use, and just being able to brute force passwords and guess passwords, and this eliminates that problem for those humans. Um, so I would say yes. I'd like to see a lot more apps and sites start using this, but it's kind of up to them. 
Does that kind of answer your question? Okay. Anyone else? Lucas? Um, I'm not sure if that's really more secure because okay. uh, you are submitting the password like unencrypted because emails are for historical reasons not encrypted. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if that's a good idea because if someone gets in the middle of your uh, email transactions then um, they could just log in. Just request the login, get, your, uh, get the password from the email and they are logged in. So you're saying they would actually log into your email or they would they would catch that on its way. It, they will catch the email on their way and they could just by themselves start this uh, process because they would okay. just enter your email, send, uh, press enter, get the email and log in. Yeah, so that's a good concern. Like that's a legitimate concern. I would still argue that there's less of a chance of that. Like someone that can do that is really good versus the, I think it's easier to get into someone's stuff just because they don't have good passwords. So I would argue that like Especially for very, very like high security stuff, yeah, that's an issue. Um, but an option then maybe is use SMS instead of email. Like SMS is a lot harder to intercept, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe use SMS. So you mentioned that one of the uh, advantages was that this can replace like sign up and forgot password and all sorts of things like this. As written, can this support? Um, like an existing sign-up, so as a possible prevention to just brute forcing a bunch of people's email addresses, that sort of thing. Um, could you have a sign-up phase where you're at least somebody entering an email address it would know whether that or not that's valid to send a code to or something along those lines? Or is it written to be like fully standalone basically right now? So I don't completely understand. So you're saying that they would be, they'd be actually validating the email? Like, well, so as you have it right now, like this dashboard, anybody can enter any email and just log in. Okay, there's right. Be some sites where clearly that's not appropriate, you know, and or there's going to be some some user specific um, components, you know, that that you would want to that. So, is it possible to tie into an existing system like that, or is this really designed just for a, a subset of use cases? Um, good question. I think it could be both, but it might only be the subset of use cases. Definitely this would allow anyone right now to write a program and just like f keep submitting your form and signing people up. So you'd end up having like 20,000 users that are illegitimate, like not real users, right? So this would allow that. But even a username and password field would allow that, unless you're doing like activation, right? So you could put another piece on the end and actually activate. So I don't think there's a big difference there. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Anybody else? No. Okay. Cool. Thank you guys.